Hey everyone, uh, kind of a little bit of exciting stuff going on here. I got my DJI Spark today. I, I bought the uh, Flymore package, which uh, came with a uh, extra battery, a uh, charging station, uh, which can charge three of the drone batteries, the charger, uh, the remote, and uh, uh, it even has an extra USB port on it. Uh, so if you had another cable, it takes a, it's not a, not a standard, uh, uh, micro U uh, USB. It's, uh, what's called an Android OTG type deal. They, they supply you with one cable to charge the remote, but this one also will plug into the drone. So if you, had four batteries, you could charge three of them in the charging dock station, and you could have one uh, in the drone and plug into the back of the drone with the cable, uh, and then have another cable plug in here so you could charge four batteries, flight batteries, and your uh, remote all at one time. Uh, and it took me a while to figure out how to get all this set up. Uh, and part of the reason is that DJI, they, they print this little stack of these micro miniature books. Uh, I don't know how they expect anybody to be able to read this stuff. Uh, I sure can't. To me, this is just a waste of time and money on their part and paper to do that. Uh, be better off putting a DVD in the... Uh, case or giving you links to some good videos and that's another little point too but I, I've seen this on all the drones so it's not just DJ, DJI what they really need is they have what's called they have some tutorials DJI has some tutorials and a lot of other people have been making uh, tutorials for the spark for quite a while because it came out a year ago uh, a little over a year ago but nobody has really done a step-by-step uh, this is what you do uh, once you, when you first get it and exactly how you do it. What, that, at least I haven't found a video like that. What I found is uh, here's a video that says oh to uh, uh, calibrate the compass in the IMU do this. Okay well that's just part of what you do. Uh, you know so I had to look through there first thing I couldn't, couldn't figure out how to turn the dang uh, remote uh, controller on or the drone and I tried all kinds of things and I accidentally somehow got the remote on but then I never could get this thing going uh, then I was watching a video and it said oh you do this but even that he went by real fast and uh, and didn't say it so on the on the drone or the remote uh, the, the drone has a batter, uh, button on the back of the battery and the remote has a power button right here. So you have four lights here. On the battery, you have four lights. So we want to turn this on. We click it down once and then click it down again until it comes up four. So hopefully you saw that. Click it once. It came on four lights. And click it again real quick. Let off click it again real quick. It, go, it counts one, two, three, four and turns on. You do the same thing on the drone. Hit the battery button on the back, let off, hit it again, let it count one, two, three, four, let the button off. And then it will start powering up. Now turn it off is a little trickier. It's easy on the drone. On here it's, it's a little hard for me sometimes to get it, but you're basically going to push the button and let it count down. See, and I missed the deal. So it's on and you hit the button again. And I, you know, to me it's, I got my little cat in here, it wants to be in the show. Oh, you keep holding it down. So it counts down. So we go over that again because, like I said, I'm still trying to get the snag of it. So it's push once, hit again, get my four lights. So I can't get out of the way. You can see that. Uh, she wants to be in the video. So now I'm up. It's waiting to find the drone to pair. Then I will go on. 
Go on. You don't need to be in the movie here. All right. Uh, so I'm going to punch it again and then count down and hold it. And then it goes off. So that's what we do there. The other thing that I had trouble doing, we don't need you in the video. Go. The other thing I had trouble uh, figuring out was getting it all hooked up to the uh, DJI Go 4 app. And I, it's on my phone over there, and I'm not going to kind of go over that this time. But I was having some issues there. Turned out that the drone wasn't paired to the uh, controller. And uh, I'm not going to go over that in here. I, I'm gonna, Later I'm going to put together a step-by-step -step because, like I said, to me, if I'd have had some, uh, somebody to put a video out and goes, okay, you just got this thing. Here you, you, do you charge the batteries. Here you do that. So I'll go over that on what I had to do to do this. Now, on my phone, I have an Android phone. And so it has the DJI Go 4 uh, app on it. The one thing that I have not figured out is it uh, it wants to do a location or map or whatever it calls it, update to the devices and it will download to the phone but it will not go into the devices. It just sits there and hangs forever. And I think part of the problem is, is it's wanting the phone to have a Wi-Fi connect to the internet and to be able to do some stuff there and then go to here. Well, it, it can't do both. It can't Wi-Fi to the Internet and Wi-Fi to the, the controller and the drone at the same time. So hopefully, uh, I, had, I found on eBay an uh, OTG cable that goes from under this uh, here and plugs into my phone, which then makes the phone connect to the uh remote controller without having to use Wi-Fi. Uh, so hopefully that's going to be the right cable and uh, if it is then I won't need to have the phone connecting to the controller via Wi-Fi. I'll be able to just, you know, you tell the phone you connect to the internet through the Wi-Fi and it'll connect directly to here. Then it will possibly do the updates. I don't know. Uh, if it doesn't, that's okay. What I'm doing right now is it comes up to that. It tells me in the phone it needs to do it, and I tell it to ignore because if I tell it to update, it'll sit there and hang. And uh, so I just tell it, you know, uh, ignore it right now. So why did I pick DGI? I did a lot of research, a lot. I mean, I, I research stuff to death, and there's some really good... Uh, drones out there and stuff. There's a lot of clones. So who's making a clone of who? Uh, I guarantee you, you can go out and find three, four, five drones made by other companies uh, that look just like the Spark, fly mostly like it, whatever else. I think there's one called C something or another in there uh, that has uh, one that's almost identical to here. Here's the thing. DJI is a large company. They're not some little factory over in China. Now, they're, uh, as far as I know, they're made in China, but they're not some little factory over in China with some people sitting over in California with just stupid little addresses or in Taiwan with stupid little addresses selling on eBay and wherever else or, or, or on some of these sites. So, I knew that I would have support and warranty for a while, or at least like that, and I could get, if I wanted to get what's called a, uh, a care plan for it. Uh, so I knew I could do that. The other thing, too, is if I ever decide I want a better drone and I don't want to have two, I can trade this in. Okay, so if I bought one of these other ones, off eBay or one of these other little websites out there selling the drones, I wouldn't be able to trade it in, so I'd have to try to sell it and uh, and stuff. So that that was part of the part of the thing on there. So it was the ability to to be able to do that. Also, I know I'll be able to get parts for this thing if I ever need it. I get you know they'll always be there. I can get blades. I can always 
you know, if I need new batteries, I can get batteries, a lot of stuff that I can do on there. The other thing, too, is the quality it seems a little bit better. This is w extremely well built, and I used to fly uh, fixed wing model aircraft and fixed wing rotary aircraft, which is helicopters, uh, using uh, controllers that cost, you know, $1,200 and stuff. And so I know what a good controller feels like. I know what good gimbals feel like. These are some high quality gimbals. And this, even though it's plastic, doesn't feel like a cheap plastic piece of junk. It's, it's really well built. Uh, the drone feels nice. It's, it's got a little bit of heft to it. Uh, now, I, I did a short video today. And... Uh, I didn't fly it much, I just brought it up, hovered it a little bit right there, kind of swung around over here, pointed out towards the backfield, uh, and brought it back around and landed. It was extremely windy and everything else, and, I was, and, and the uh, drone was bumping around due to transitional lift when the wind gust hits it, hit it, uh, so it was doing a jumping up and down. So you see a little of that in the video. But it was also doing this, it was having to rock because it would get a gust and the drone would automatically crack and try to maintain its location, its footing. And uh, so it would rock like this, it bounced and like this. The Spark only has a two axis gimbal, which means the camera can rock up and down and the camera can rock this way. It, 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 it won't correct for y'all like this, okay? So it, it can... Balance, it can correct for that. It can correct for lean side to side to a degree. That said, I was surprised with how much the drone was bumping around. And unfortunately, when I f flew it out there, I didn't have a, another camera on a tripod showing you what the drone was doing because it's hard to tell when you look at the video that comes from the drone how stable it is. There's a slight movement up and down, but there's hard, there is nothing like this. And if you'd have seen what the drone was doing, it was bouncing and every, I mean, it was, it was, you know, popping up and down and everything else. It's extremely uh, stable on the video, so I'm very impressed with that. Uh, I was going to talk a little bit about the FAA and all that stuff and my displeasure with what's going on with that. Uh, but I'll, I'll take that, I'll, I'll save that for another video. Uh, what I did find out, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this little point. The, the, uh, the government, via the FAA, is trying to regulate people. In, this. in other words, they want to regulate me. They want to regulate you. And they want to regulate your neighbor if he has a drone or anybody else. And they want to neighbor, they want to regulate <coughs> that little 11-year-old kid that used to be able to just go enjoy a hobby with his father or parents or brother, big brother, whatever else, and go out and get into the aviation. And, you know, that the, the model aviation hobby has fostered so many great people that have made it on into the aviation industry and become engineers, become everything else in aviation. And, and, you know, they're kind of making that to where that's going to be impossible for that to happen uh, without it being so strictly tied down and controlled. Uh, that's just the way I see it. But the point is they don't really need to control the people so much. They need to control the drone manufacturers. Okay? Uh, the DJI drone has geo, uh, I guess you'd call it fencing. It knows if it's a restricted airspace or it's a place I'm not supposed to fly over. It knows that. It won't let me do it. They have different levels. They have some that are red or what they call every You're not flying over that and probably unless you're uh, law enforcement or military or something like that in the government. You're not flying over that area with one of these drones at all. But, but then there's other ones uh, in there that you can, you can go in and say, I have permission. What it does is it then will unlock it and let you fly that area, but it made a record. <laughs> so now if, if you if you lied and went on here and something buddy gets hurt and whatever, they got your butt, man. So 
I agree with that because I think people have been really stupid with these things. They've just got out, you know, thrown them in the driveway and hauled up down the streets and flown over people's houses, fly them around in people's backyards that don't block them. And people go, oh, they got a camera on them. They're spying on me. They're doing all this kind of stuff, you know. Uh, and there you go. That goes from a lot of irresponsible people out there that have done some stuff. There's, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't know if this guy will ever see this, and I don't even know his name, but I watched a video the other day. Some guy that has a part uh, or has a, a part 107 license uh, and has got a company in Houston and they do drone flying all over the world and, and apparently he has a high, he lives in a high rise apartment and he took his uh, Phantom 4 or whatever it was and he flew it out the window and over out in, in downtown Houston area filming back to a still and he was trying to explain well he could do that because at that time he was flying as a recreational pilot and all this bull about how up until then or coming up short, all the things that the FAA told you you couldn't do were just advisories. That meant you, they weren't really laws, they were just advisories. He's kind of true in that, but that's, just, that's not the point. Here he is, the guy is two, three hundred feet up in the air in an apartment, flies it out off the balcony and across the deal. Never taking into consideration what would happen if he had a failure on that drone. If the battery all of a sudden just died, if a prop come off, broke, bird hit it, whatever, and that thing went crashing down to the streets two hundred feet below. And he'd be darn lucky if it didn't hit somebody because if it hit anybody walking down the streets of downtown Houston, it would have killed them. So that's what I'm talking about. That's stupid. Now, I'm not going to say that to him on his channel, but that's, that to me is stupid. That is total irresponsibility. If I was a government official and saw that, I'd go yank his 107 license right there. I'd yank it on the spot. Because that is, that's what I don't like. But anyway, enough on that. You know, I've got some other little things that I'm coming up with because I'm a cheap, I'm on a fixed income. So, you know, I, I'm coming up with a way I can do my phone in here without having to take it out of the stuff. I'm going to probably eventually try to get me a tablet. I'm finding some small ones. Uh, but there again, uh, I don't know how these people do it. I, I go outside and look at my phone in, in the daytime and I can't even see it. So to me it's like just looking at a black slate. I, I have no clue how you're supposed to look at this and tell, tell what the... If I go stand inside uh, a building, then I can see it, but then the drone's out there. Uh, oh, maybe I can get some kind of sunshade thing, but then that kind of just beats it too. Anyway, uh... Initial uh, initial thoughts on this uh, DJI Spark. <laughs> it's a nice little drone. It's nice. It's small. It's extremely quiet. Uh, you hear these drones are just buzzing around like mad little bumblebees. Yeah, this one kind of makes that little bumblebee sound, but it's not all that loud. It's not this extremely noisy thing. So anyway, uh, we'll try to introduce this thing to my tractor and uh, get some videos because uh, I do videos of me doing things on my tractor and I haven't done any in a while. Right now it's ex been extremely wet. We got a lot of rain, 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 so I don't know when I'll be able to get out there and do some stuff. But I'm going to try to get some footage of this because I bought it to be a flying video camera uh, to make my YouTube videos and no it's it's only 1080p oh my god I hear people out there go oh it's only 1080p hey okay first thing I can't see that clear to even tell the difference between 480p and 1080p myself it's all I can do to upload anything uh, at 1080p out here where I'm out in the boonies. Four, if I tried to upload load a 4K video five minutes long, it'd take about three weeks. 
and I've got the and I, I got the slowest broadband in the in the on the face of the planet, but that's all I can get out here. So it's 1080p, but I uh, to me it shoots beautiful pictures. Uh, so like I said, we'll get to know this little guy. This little guy is going to get to know my tractor. Going to get to know my farm, and uh, so stay tuned. Keep checking back for track for for videos of me and my what I'm doing with my Mahindra 1526 and what I'm doing with my DJI Spark, both red. So thanks. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe if you haven't. Be sure to check the little bell so you get notified when I put new videos up. Thank you.